Okay. We'll bring this meeting back to order. Okay, welcome to the Queen Anne's County Commissioner's meeting. This is a public meeting that is being aired live on our local cable television station, QAC-TV7. These media broadcasts provide county citizens an opportunity to watch and review our scheduled public meetings. In addition to our live audience this evening, we are providing remote options for citizens to watch and participate in county commissioner meetings. Citizens may watch our meeting live on our website at qac.org slash live or on our television channel, BreezeLine Channel 7 or High Definition Channel 507. Citizens may also participate by joining the live Zoom meeting by going to qac.org slash public comment. Citizens may also email comments to public comment at qac.org. Comments received will be submitted during the press and public comment period on this evening's agenda. We acknowledge your participation and by attending you acknowledge that this session is both recorded and aired. Press and public comment will be taken and is limited to three minutes per person. If you do care to speak, please sign the sheet on the information table in our lobby. Comments longer than three minutes can be submitted in writing for the commissioner's review. We will now stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Commission President Jim Moran. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could remain standing for a moment of silence for James Chanley, who passed away, father of Steve Chanley. Thank you very much. All right. So that brings us to today's agenda. So our agenda for our meeting this evening, June 27th, along with the regular session minutes, the closed session minutes, the roads board minutes, the sanitary commission minutes from our June 13th meeting have all been circulated for review. Do we have any additions and or corrections? Oh, motion to accept the agenda as submitted and the minutes as submitted. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right, thank you, commissioners. So we just had a closed session under the general provisions article sections 3305B7 to, dis to consult with council and article 3305B1 to discuss boards and commissions. So, and I think we have a couple boards and commission appointments uh, to make this evening. Um, I move to reappoint Randy Hutton and appoint Jason Cheerbrooks to fill the vacancy on the Agricultural Preservation Advisory Board. These terms will expire on June 30th, 2028. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right, thank you, commissioners. All right, next up we have uh, press and public comments. No, I, I'm, 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 excuse me. I move to reappoint uh, Tina Trice to fill a vacancy on the Housing Authority. This term will expire on June 30th, uh, 2028, and this is to fill the vacancy for the uh, resident commissioner on the Housing Authority Commission. Second. Second. We have a motion to a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. There we go. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, press and public comments, uh, part one. Do we have any? Uh, no, sure nobody out there is going to. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's the rain. Yeah. Yeah, the rain tonight. Okay. Well, then, if you want to move into legislation, uh, tab number six, we have um, a decision to make from a hearing from last meeting. Round two. Round two. That's right. So I have anything and, uh, under tab six. Seven. Seven. Excuse me, tab number seven, item, tab seven, item number one on pages one through 12. So we had a public hearing on June 13th to review and receive public comment on 11 agricultural land preservation easement applications. Uh, we did have one. Uh, there was a property line dispute with the neighboring property owner, which I believe was, uh, was remedied. So, um, Ms. Donna Smith is here. She's been working on that. And um, so I think these are ready now for a decision. Uh, it turns out that the, the disputed property line was not within the proposed easement area application for uh, that property for Mr. A. Downs Warren. I move to approve the 11 new mouth properties for easement application to be submitted to the mouth board of trustees for approval and appraisal. 
Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Do we know the um, <coughs> agreement? Do we know the agreement they came to? It's not an easement, so it doesn't no matter. No, since it wasn't in the in the easement. If it was in the easement, there'd have been an issue that's not in the easement. So a resolution. I don't think we know if there's any other resolution, but it's yeah. it's not subject to the easement that's before us. Right. Yeah. In other words, the property that's right. boundary that's in dispute is outside of the proposed mouth easement area that we would be approving for submission to the to the mouth board. Okay. Bill Patrick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're approving the 11 new mouth properties for easement application to be submitted to the mouth board of trustees for approval and appraisal. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. And if I could just. Uh, can we get down up here real quick to just explain Absolutely. this? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. This yeah. new little paper we got here, since we tasked her with it when she was here last time. Hmm? Good evening. Good evening. So what are we looking at there with all the greens and the blues and the, I mean. As far as the map that I just gave you at the last meeting at, on June the 13th, we were discussing properties that were available for possible solar overlay, overlay. So I went to the GIS department, had a meeting with Sam Stanton, and he, I have to give him all the credit for this. He was um, very prompt and very efficient in getting this through. So this map that you are looking at, the blue is the entire county, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me, the orange line is the solar overlay transmission line, I guess you would say, the right. two mile mm -hmm. on the east and west side of 301. So Sam and I talked about how to narrow this down and whittle this down to properties that may be available. In the attached email that I gave you, he selected layers to eliminate parcels that were less than 20 acres, which more than likely would not be a desirable property put solar on. He removed the parcels that are already developed solar projects. He removed all conservation lands, mouth, royal legacy, deed restricted open space, non contiguous, anything with an easement basically was removed. He removed all the forest land, water and wetlands, so if it was ponds, if it was a lake that's on the property or whatever, removed all zoning classifications other than ag and countryside. He removed all impervious surface, so he took the houses out, so they took the residence, barns, and driveways out that would not be available for solar. And then he queried again for remaining parcels of less than 20 acres and removed them. So the green um, parcels that you see on the map are the parcels that are available or would possibly be available for solar. Now there still are some tweaks that you would have to take out. I mean, unless you went in and manually removed them because if you have a ditch and you have to have a setback from a 25 like a blue line stream there has to be a 25 foot setback from the blue line stream for the Maryland department of environment there also is driveways roadways and you just kind of have to whittle down there's no way for him to possibly do that so that left 30,000 acres roughly that can go to solar correct but it's probably less than that well, I feel 100% sure that it would be less than that because of the examples that I just gave. Hmm. And that's 30,000 without stepping outside of the existing. Correct. Uh, and there was a text amendment that was um, passed that if I think it's called a tow in, if you no, had. We did not pass it. We haven't oh, had it. It hasn't okay. come back before us. Right. So that if just a portion or a One corner acre. or something One that's acre. in that two mile radius that it would be included. So you can see on here that outside of that orange line, there are several parcels that just have that corner or piece and it's not the entire parcel. Gotcha. So, and um, it looks like a lot um, and it is a lot. Yeah, but when you take it in the scale of that entire area, only right. 30,000, that's a lot of acres in there. Yes. Flewed out. So. Yes, that is. That's been. Um, okay. So that's kind of like, a sign? general idea. Mm. You know, and if they would actually be a desirable piece of property, who knows? Okay. Very thank good. You. Yes. Tell Sam thank you. Yes. yes. Awesome. I, like I said, I told him I would let you all know that he did the work on this, not me. He just relayed it to me to relay to you. Um, Perfect. One additional thing that I would like to say on the preservation, um, the 
11 applications that you submitted or approved is 11 of the 20. So we're submitting 3,300 acres for preservation this year, which is more than we've done in the last 20 years. And so they're not going to be on here yet either, correct? No. And I still have 1,800 acres that haven't settled yet. That's not on that not map. On this. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Once we get that 1,800 acres settled, we're going to be at almost 89,000 acres preserved. Perfect. Outstanding. Yeah. yeah. The governor was impressed with that. Mm -hmm. Y'all can talk about that. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Yep. Yeah. All, right. All right. Thank you. All right, commissioners, uh, while we're under uh, tab number seven legislative, we do have um, proposed county ordinance 23-04, which is a property tax credit for certain retired veterans uh, available for um, introduction this evening. I'll introduce it. Okay, Commissioner Moran, introduce that. All right, thank you. All right, moving on, um, no presentations this evening. Uh, we can go to new business, uh, that would be Tab number three, we have uh, 18 action items for your consideration this evening. And uh, so tab number three, item number one on page one is Proclamation 23-37, Parks and Recreation Month, July. So Steve needs to come on up for that. Steve, you might as well come on up for that. And yeah. um, you would think uh, June was Parks and Recreation Month, but it's... Uh, <laughs> We're getting a head start. You're getting a head start here today. That's right. <laughs> So, All right, well, I've got the proclamation. Tab three. Yep. Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout the co country, including Queen Anne's County, and whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring that the health of all citizens and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. And whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas parks and natural recreation areas provide, excuse me, improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development, and produce habitat for wildlife. And whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and, the, and recreate outdoors. Whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and whereas Queen Anne's County recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Queen Anne's County Board of County Commissioners that July is recognized as Parks and Recreation Month in Queen Anne's County. So there you go, Steve, that's for you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All righty. Thank you, Commissioner Marine. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that. All right. Okay, so um, the next uh, several items, six, I believe, are for the uh, Parks and Recreation Group, and you can tell it's the beginning of a new fiscal year, so that's great. So uh, item number two on under tab three, pages um, two through five, is basketball court renovation at Sellersville Park. So this is a contract with ATC Corporation to refurbish the basketball court at Sellersville Park. Total cost $86,530 to include resurfacing, lining, color coding, and replacement of goals under the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance contract. I move to authorize Department of Parks and Rec to contract with ATC Corp to refurbish the basketball courts at Southernsville Park in the amount of $86,530. Second. Any discussion? How old are these? When was the last time it was done? Do you have any idea? I think... Um, or was it never done? I think it's only been done once, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Right. Um, it definitely, definitely is well needed, mm -hmm. um, and this is a, you know, as, as you can tell, this is a lot of um, effort that's being pushed towards the, the northern part of the county this year. So again, but, you know, we're getting that equity we did mm -hmm. in the south, we did the central, and now we're working our way up north and yep. making sure everybody has got something nice. Good. Good. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Right. Thank you, commissioners. 
Item 3, um, pages 6 through 10, is um, a contract with ATC Corporation for pickleball and tennis court renovations, also at Sellersville Park. And this is to convert two tennis courts into one tennis court and two pickleball courts at Sellersville. Total cost $143,329. Includes paving, fencing, color coding, and striping of the courts. This will be under the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance contract and CPA 0818. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Rec to contract with ATC Corp to install one tennis and two pickleball courts at Sudlersville Park in the amount of 143329 Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Item 4 on pages 11 through 14 is a futsal court renovation work at Sellersville Park. And this is a contract with Musco Lighting to convert one basketball court into one futsal court at Sellersville Park for a total cost of $139,497 under Musco's mini pitch system with LED lighting technology. Excuse me, includes all that with lighting technology, and that's under the source well contract number 071619 MSL. I move to authorize the Department of Park and Rec to contract with Musco Lighting to convert one basketball court into one futsal court at Sotosville Park in the amount of $139,497. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Do we have any other futsal courts? No, nope. this will be the first. first. Are there others that are planned? Um, not quite yet. We know that there's been a, a recent upsurge in that, and usually what they do is they end up playing on tennis courts. Right. So Or the basketball or courts. Or basketball courts, but to, you know, save the integrity of the tennis courts and the fencing and the netting, you know, this is a nice uh, nice amenity up there. We know that there's a, um, a high need for, for soccer up there. We know that's a popular area, so this is a great way to, to accommodate that. It's got lights. It's a smaller court. You don't need 22 people to play you can build with yeah it's a fast six. moving game yeah it's, it's a finesse finesse part of soccer yeah mm. and it's it's it is it like a turf type of thing? no it's uh basically like a tennis court or a like basketball battle? court wow basketball yeah smaller ball it's harder and just it's it looks like a large um large tennis ball so to speak but when it bounces it doesn't give that same high bounce it bounces probably about half. add some neosporin to this uh, <laughs> we could sell it <laughs> some band-aids maybe <laughs> it'll work <laughs> okay so uh this is to authorize the department of parks and recreation to contract the musco lighting to install one foot futsal court at southersville park in the amount of 139,497 all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed so moved Okay, thank you, commissioners. Item five on pages 15 through 18 is uh, the Churchill Park basketball court renovation work. This is another contract with ATC Corporation to color coat and line two basketball courts at Churchill Park for $15,365 under the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance contract NCPA 0818. I move to authorize the Department of Park and Rec to contract with ATC Court to color code and line two basketball courts at Churchill Park in the amount of $15,365. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Item number six on pages 19 through 23. Uh, now it's time for our animal friends. This is uh, the White Marsh Park Dog Park Fencing. This is a contract with Long Fence Company to install fencing and a mow strip for the dog park at White Marsh Park. Total cost $25,950 for a 75 by 125 perimeter fence around the dog park area under the Prince George's County Board of Education contract. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Rec to contract with Long Fence Company, Incorporated, to install fencing for the dog park at White Marsh Park in the amount of $25,950. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, item number seven. 
On pages 24 through 28 is the cart path paving at Blue Heron Golf Course for holes one through nine. And this is a contract for cart path paving uh, for holes one through nine with David A. Bramble for a total cost of $243,000. And they've done work down there at the golf course and have done a spectacular job for us. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Recreation, Blue Heron Golf Course to contract with Blue Heron Golf Course Cart Path Project to David A. Bramble, Inc. for $243,000. The terms of the contract are for excavation, grading, paving, starting in the summer of 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, thank you Director Chanley. Thank you, and also thank you for the acknowledgement from my dad. You're quite welcome. Quite welcome, sir. Just point out to uh, commissioners, uh, you know, for folks out there, these are all projects that were included in the uh, in the approved adopted FY24 budget, and we're glad to see that uh, we're getting a good start on getting these projects uh, underway and completed for our our citizens out there using our parks. Okay, uh, item number eight, uh, pages 29 through 34 is the uh, FY 2024 impact fee schedule inflationary adjustment. Um, and as you recall, um, July 1st of each year, the amount of the residential and development impact fee is automatically adjusted to account for inflationary increases in construction costs under the county code. This is based on the uh, engineering news record construction cost index for inflationary adjustments. Uh, this year, unlike last year, it's, it's more in line. It's 1.8%, which is uh, more traditional from the pre-pandemic numbers. However, we are uh, reviewing the impact fee ordinance currently. That is going to be coming forth uh, soon, and it is a recommendation of staff to keep the rates uh, at a 0% increase like we did last year when we saw a very, very high inflationary cost uh, adjustment. So we would recommend... Um, uh, of these options, option two, to keep the rates at the uh, current values and not propose any increase to impact fees at this time. See, those ready mix concrete numbers are leading the way, aren't they? <laughs> wow. Okay. I move to keep the FY24 yeah. impact fee re rate flat at 0% in accordance with section 18 colon 3-6C of the county code. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Item number nine on page 35 is the Board of Education annual budget certification statement. And this is the uh, annual certification statement for the FY24 Board of Education budget showing all the local revenues allocated by the county commissioners for operating, which is listed under current expenses, capital projects uh, listed as school construction and debt service. Uh, all the figures included on the certificate are consistent with our adopted FY24 county budget. And we would recommend um, that the uh, president of the board sign the certification. I move to approve the Board of Education annual budget certification statement for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Item number 10 on pages uh, 36 through 38 is a letter of support for the Hope School Repair Grant Submission. Uh, the Queen Anne's County Retired School Personnel Association is seeking a grant from the Maryland Historical Trust African American Heritage Preservation Program uh, in the amount of $18,000 to repair the soffit, fascia, and roof of the Hope School located just in front of the Queen Anne's County High School. And uh, so we have an attached uh, letter of support here in the book for your review and execution. I move to execute the letter of support to the Maryland Historical Trust African American Heritage Preservation Program for a grant submission in the amount of $18,000 for repairs to the Hope School located in front of Queen Anne's County High School. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Have they ever come in front of us and asked us in our uh, grant applications for any funding at all? Do you recall? Under the outside agency yes. groups? Yeah. 
I do not believe I've seen anything. I just say, you know, if you, if you don't mind, if, if you could just stay on top of this, if they don't get approval, I think yep. we as commissioners should that one. Re definitely take this one on. Okay. You know, and we had this piece of history there, so. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? We actually talked about that about three months ago. Yeah. That building. We were Good. talking about it. Good. All righty. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. All right, moving on to item number 11 on pages 39, excuse me, on pages uh, 35, yeah, right. 30. No, 39. 39, yeah. yeah. Um, that is the uh, annual dues for uh, MAKO. In addition to that, uh, they've included uh, all their accomplishments for this past uh, year. So can I get a motion on that? I move to approve the FY24 Maryland Association of Counties annual dues invoice in the amount of $15,913. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion here? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So move. Okay. Thank you, Commissioners. Item 12 is uh, for animal services, and this is for the um, proposed play yard improvement project. It's on pages uh, 45 through 52. And this is a uh, comprehensive contract for reconstruction and renovation of the outdoor animal play yards at the animal services facility. Uh, this is a very specialized nature of, uh, of activities. Uh, tasks are going to be contracted to qualified craftsmen through uh, new edge contractors, utilizing some of the same vendors that we've used for our athletic field turf consultants. And uh, Michael Clay is a local resident of New Edge, and he will manage and inspect the project. And the purchase will replace and update three uh, old uh, animal play yards at animal services for the enrichment activities there. The existing stone yards and chain link fences will be replaced with artificial turf, custom fencing, and shade canopies. Total price, $281,000. We have uh, our Chief of Animal Services, Kelly Hamilton, here if you have any questions. And I know she's very excited about uh, the dog park we at White Marsh excited, and, and yes. of course, the, uh, the project we have here. So, All right. I move to proceed with the contract for New Edge contractors in the amount of 281000 for the renovation of the play yards. Second. We have a motion and a, sec a second. Any discussion? Fire away. We'll let you Tell us a little bit about it. Okay. So um, currently, like, like Todd mentioned, our yards are stone with chain link fence. Obviously, dogs running on stone is not the most comfortable Thing for them. With the chain link fence, we don't have any visual barriers. So these dogs <coughs> are kind of seeing each other in these yards. And as you can imagine, dogs are getting overstimulated. They have anxiety. If they're dog on dog aggressive, it becomes a safety concern. So if you guys kind of look at the, uh, the diagram that I sent, the custom fencing that we're going to have um, will have that visual barrier on the bottom. And then with the perforated top, we'll allow for ventilation to come through. So a lot safer for our animals, a lot safer for our staff. The canopy that's going to be installed um, will actually make for a really nice meet and greet area uh, for our potential adopters or even just for our staff when we want to go out and have play groups with our animals and give them that type of enrichment. So we're really, really excited about this. Um, it's projected to start around August 1st. Um, assuming we can get the canopy and everything, all the materials, as we all know how, how that tends to go. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're set to go for August 1st. We'll be without the yards for about 30 days, so it'll be a little challenging for the staff to have to walk all the animals and not have that, um, not have that yard time with them. But we'll get things figured out. 30 days is not so bad in the, in the big scheme of things. Very good. When, uh, when we were doing the budgeting and you came in, you had mentioned that you you want to expand the size, the footprint? Of the yards? Yeah. So what we did actually, yes, so that's correct. So we have four yards currently, and what we did is we're taking out one of those barriers so we'll have one larger yard, so we'll have three yards now in total. So while it sounds like we're decreasing our size, no, um, we're really enlarging this one area that'll make it better for, you know, again, potential adopters, play groups, things of that nature. Any other discussion? Looking forward to it. So, again, this is another major upgrade to a facility that, for the county and for the citizens of Queen Anne's County, and I'm, I'm glad we're doing this. So. We appreciate it. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, 
I guess we're going to well read this one again. I moved to award to Queen Anne's County. Oh, wrong song. I moved to proceed with the contract for the new edge contractors in the amount of two hundred eighty-one thousand for the renovation of the play yards. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, commissioners. All right, commissioners. Item thirteen on pages fifty-three and fifty-four is the. Synthetic running track replacement contract uh, for the Queen Anne's County High School. And again, we're going to be working with uh, ATC Corporation. Uh, they performed an assessment uh, for the rehabilitation of that track, and we're going to do the same thing we did at uh, Kent Island, essentially. Uh, remove the existing rubberized surface, mill and overlay the uh, distressed base asphalt, and put a new latex running track surface down uh, over the summer months. So. Looking forward to getting this done, and we'll be consistent with our Ken Island High School track. I move to Just award to Queen Anne's County High School synthetic running track replacement contract to ATC Corp of Baltimore, Maryland, in the amount of $332,240, and authorize Director of Public Works to issue a notice of award and execute the contract. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Wait, was this bid out to how many folks? I'm sorry? Any folks bid on this? We did not bid this one out when we did the Ken Island High School track last year. It was bid out, and we had received only one bid, um, and uh, it had delayed the project. Of course, there's a tight time frame to get this done during the summer without impacting fall school activities. So in this case, uh, based on the response last, uh, last spring when ATC was the only vendor to have bid, being that they have the uh, cooperative purchasing agreement, we piggybacked on that in order to just hit the ground running, get the job done this summer well in advance of school resuming this fall. But typically we send out bids, right? Yes. What, what you'll find, Patrick, and you'll see more, more of these will come across, is there's some niche uh, types of things that are done that <laughs> you get no responses except for the people that actually do the work, quite frankly. We've had some other issues with getting multiple bidders and throwing them back. And like Lee said, you don't want to get, you want to get in line for these because they, they only got a short window to get them done, so. That's right. But the nice thing is, like I said, we're piggybacking on that contract for, so that dollar amount is the best deal we're going to get. Well, they have to, yeah, otherwise they'll be pulled off the list. Correct, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Because they so, do fact know. check. I mean, they right. fact check their pricing right. and all. So. Which is nice. How many lanes will Queen Anne's have? Five? I, I, I know it's less than Ken Island. I don't know that for certain and I, I can't respond to that what i do recall is that we are taking this opportunity to upgrade the track uh converting it from the existing imperial 440 yard uh surface to the 400 meter surface which will uh, allow it to be more uh, utilizable for track meets and such i don't recall number of lanes offhand yeah, i think when we looked at the, the new turf field we'd have to in order to make everything it's eight, right? And don't they typically? Well, you're supposed eight? to have, I think, yeah, eight. eight? But I, I think this, I think it's only got five, maybe six. But uh, and in order to, to expand it, we'd have to move all the bleachers, all the right. lights, and it was just, uh, it was just the cost was. It's been like this for forty-five years, thirty-five, whatever it is. It's been like that. So I mean, I'm glad to see this is getting done too. So it, it's a huge improvement for them. So good. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. So move. Thank you. All right. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, item number 14 on pages 55 and 56 is the Cloverfields Community Flood Mitigation uh, AE Study Contract Award. And we did receive uh, sealed bids for this project. It's a floodplain or flood mitigation project involving a study of the Cloverfields drainage area, evaluation of potential flood mitigation strategies, holding public outreach meetings, and development of construction documents for selected mitigation strategies and development of grant applications for project implementation. And the cost is even ten dollars of each one. How is that possible? Unfreaking believable. One hundred and sixty six thousand one hundred and ninety dollars. Right. They're ten dollars apart from each other. Three bids. I think they were looking at our capital budget, maybe, or so. Or oh. <laughs> Smart bidder. We had communicated but to them what the budget what was. What our budget was, yeah. So. <laughs> I'm Very tight to, <laughs> to award the Cloverfields Neighborhood Flood Mitigation Design Contract to Baylands Consultants and Designers, Inc. of Hanover, Maryland, in the amount of $166,190, and authorize the Director of Public Works to issue the notice of award and execute the contract. Second.
We have a motion and a second. Any discussion here? In all fairness, they get they see those budgets anyway. Quite right. frankly, yeah. I mean, when they're when they go on Maryland Marketplace, you see the uh, <laughs> job price or whatever. So it's not like it's a big mystery. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, Lee, if you don't mind, you want to give us a little two-minute story of why we're doing this and who this is impacting and and why? I mean, I think that there's some people out there now that are probably going, what, what's this all about? And there's other people that go, it's about time, but, you know, a little, little description. Well, certainly. Uh, this is something that actually uh, you had uh, given us some guidance to uh, pursue options as best we could. Uh, for many people on uh, the island are painfully aware uh, the Cloverfields community was platted uh, decades ago uh, prior to a lot of the modern regulations that we have and uh, as such it resulted in a community which is uh, fails to perk and uh, as a result we have a lot of uh, failing septics a lot of drainage issues in that area when public sewer went in there that was that opportunity when it expanded and it built because owing to it having public sewer it became buildable unfortunately at that time there were hydric soils and wetlands and ultimately drainage issues. There's a, main, a, a major drainage ditch that goes through the community. Uh, that coupled with some offsite runoff, uh, the lot sizes, some challenges within the community in drainage within. It's unfortunately one of the lower areas on Kent Island and opportunities to, there will be no real solution for it but we do know and recognize that there are things that can be done. There will be opportunities to perhaps install some stormwater management retrofits, implement some best management practices around the community, do some outreach and things such that there could be opportunities to perhaps alleviate or, or lessen some of the issues. Uh, per your, your guidance, we had uh, been exploring uh, grant opportunities. We had applied for a couple, uh, one through uh, FEMA, and uh, the one that uh, was presented to us here was with FEMA. It is uh, Building Resilient Infrastructure in Communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were receptive to our proposal and awarded us a grant in the amount of $116,200 for which to assess the uh, situation in the community, do a drainage area study, hydraulic analysis, and prepare uh, prioritization of objectives which could help. Uh, this would be done in, in conjunction with some community outreach meetings. So we'll be engaging with the community to solicit their input to guide the consultants, but also report to them on what would work, what may not work, and why. Uh, so with that grant, this provides us design plans and even perhaps some uh, grant mm -hmm. applications for eventual construction grants to implement some of these things. We did a public, uh, we publicly advertised a request for qualifications for which we received uh, several, and these three firms had all responded. Uh, we accepted them all as qualified. We did communicate to them the budget. That's something that we, even though it's often for those who will research, it's publicly available, uh, we often don't show our hands so as to, you know, want to get the best price we can. In this case, we wanted to ensure that everyone knew that the budget that we'd be working under and we structured the ask in a way that, um, hey, we, we, your budget's important, you really need to meet the budget, but more critically, you need to understand the challenges faced by this community and be uniquely qualified to study and present solutions. Uh, upon review of the proposals, uh, we believe that uh, Balin Consultants, which fortunately ended up being $10 less, but that wasn't the deciding factor, uh, they had assigned the what we felt is the greatest understanding to some of the more practical things to solving this, including the hydraulic analysis, as well as that public outreach and engagement, which is something we look forward to them doing because as you alluded, we're here today because we're responding to all the residents out there who are looking for solutions and things that can be done. But no matter anything we do out there uh, will help us in, in, with the state with our MS requirements, right? I mean, anything that they come up with and say that that's just another check that we can mark off for some of the mandated stuff that the state's going to have us do for stormwater management anyway so yeah all these old subdivisions didn't right. have any stormwater right. management installed when they were platted and that's you know something we're still trying to catch up on now the ms4 program allows us to to do some of these projects in these communities to get those credits going forward 
Yeah. Very good. Plus, it's where they're qualifying anyway, right? So it's mm -hmm. your densely populated all our community. For sure. Yeah. Pretty much what yeah. they're after. All right. Well, for one more time, I move to award the Cloverfield's Neighborhood Flood Mitigation Design Contract to, to Balin Consultants and Designers, Incorporated of Hanover, Maryland, in the amount of $166,190, and authorize the Director of Public Works to issue the notice of award and execute the contract on behalf of the County Commissioners. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, item number 15 on pages uh, 57 through 71 is um, a consent um, by the county to amend a road improvement surety for Wild Lake properties. And uh, this is kind of an administrative item, but uh, essentially the, uh, the developer on this uh, sold a piece of property before it was developed. Um, the, he didn't renew the letter of credit. Uh, we had to uh, call, Public Works had to call the bond, and now we're refreshing that bond with the, uh, the new owner so that they can decide if they're going to develop the property or abandon the property and extinguish the lots. And so that's kind of where we are, but we wanted to make sure we had the protection monetarily to, to uh, build the road in the event they proceed with the development. So we would recommend that the um, Commission President sign that amendment. I move to consent the amendment to the Wild Lake Properties Improvement Charity and execute the instrument of agreement. Second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for coming in this evening. Thank you, thank you Appreciate Lee. it. Uh, item number 16 on pages uh, 72 and 73. This is a uh, letter of support to the uh, Maryland Department of Health for um, uh, partnering with them in our sister counties here in the Upper Shore for a residential treatment letter uh, center for children and adolescents. Uh, this is uh, for um, continuing work with the um, uh, Wissett Center, Carter Center up in uh, Kent County to uh, improve that property, improve that facility, that campus uh, with the Maryland Department of Health for um, a youth crisis center and other services. I move to execute the residential treatment center, RTC for children and adolescents letter of support. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you, commissioners. And uh, I will say that uh, I did, you know, send this uh, information out uh, to, to the other counties in the Upper Shore, and I believe the other counties are going to be uh, proceeding with uh, similar letters of support. So we'll, we'll certainly stay tuned on that. There'll be more of, more of this to come on this project. Uh, next item, item number 17, um, is a Budget Amendment CC59, Chesapeake Bay Environmental Center thin layer placement of dredge material. And this amendment establishes budget authority in the CBEC thin layer placement of dredge material uh, with our uh, public landings group. They submitted a DNR Waterway Improvement Fund grant in the amount of $35,000. The MOU was approved and signed, and um, so we're just ready to move that forward. No additional county funds are requested with the amendment. Motion to approve CC 59. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. And our final action item this evening is budget amendment number CC 60. This is for our public landings. Um, this is the maintenance and improvements capital project. Uh, this budget amendment uh, actually decreases budget authority slightly by $863 mm -hmm. due to a grant that has since expired. Uh, but it does increase the budget authority by $100,000 for the Kent Narrows Landing Paving Project. Uh, funds were awarded from a fiscal 21 grant through the DNR Waterway Improvement Fund. And uh, this work has been completed, and you've, maybe you've seen that down at the Kenton Ayers under the bridge, uh, but the grant funds will be reimbursed uh, to us now at this time. So no, no county funds are requested. Motion to approve CC60. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. All right. Uh, that is all of our action items this evening. Uh, we can have press and public comments. If anyone's no, no one virtual. No one virtual? Okay. All right. Do you want to speak? No? Okay. All right. We can uh, start roundtable. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, well, it was good. Jim, um, we had the opportunity this past Friday to uh, 
tour uh, some farms here in Queen Anne's County with the governor um, to impress upon him the um, importance of the ag preservation funding that uh, we got budgeted in this year, but to continue to fund it um, to protect both our farmers and our generational farms so that they can continue to produce here in Queen Anne's County and continue to be part of the culture here, as well as uh, being able to take a look at um, uh, how much property can be preserved um, so we can kind of get our hand, arms around what, what the solar uh, push is going to look like. Um, as, as I said, I, I think it's two policies that are coming from different directions that are sometimes going to cross and it's not going to be a good thing because on one hand, you know, they want us to preserve property and farms, and on the other hand, they want to put uh, solar on the same farms. So eventually, one's uh, the bow's going to break somewhere, um, and what we're trying to do is make sure the conversations never have to take the farms out of preservation and then uh, stick solar on them as a, to try and meet those goals. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's plenty of other areas. Um, we talked to the Secretary of Ag, Kevin Attucks, and he, he understands that there are plenty of other opportunities for solar, whether aggregate on smaller farms, um, brownfields, uh, parking lots in, at the high schools and similar, other schools similar to what they did at Chesapeake College. So it's going to be a continuing conversation on that end, but you know, really we wanted to highlight what the preservation has done, how hard our farmers work, and how much time they put into doing what they do best. Um, I think the governor was truly uh, impressed by what he saw between here and uh, Ken County. Um, and I want to thank Donna and, and Soil Conservation and Ag Extension all for putting the tour together. Uh, myself and Jim and Chris had the opportunity uh, to take part in it. So um, that's all I got. Very good. Roger? Good. Good. Chris? Uh, happy Fourth of July, everybody. That's next week. That's next week, but we <laughs> have a meeting before then. So. Yeah, true. Actually, it starts this weekend, so. Very good. Okay. Traffic-wise, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, so traffic. Well, since you brought it up, uh, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? So, oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, let's see here. Um, you know, the, the Bay Bridge, the Red X. I think the number one complaint that I get is, and I think our fellow commissioners and anybody else is, you know, what are you going to do about the people running down the lane where the Red X is? And MDTA is, is ticketing them on a sporadic. Thank you, sporadic. And, and I think that uh, we're going to try and step our game up with that and, and possibly have the sheriff's department do it and, and just sit them out there and at least on our side of the bridge uh, keep it under control because it just frustrates people. People, you know, want to be law abiding, want to, want to, you know, they'll wait their turn in, in, in the line, but then somebody just flies down the left side. We had a fatality on Sunday in Anne Arundel County, which required the state to shut down, SHA to shut down Route 50 westbound on a Sunday. It was, you know, so the, the, naturally the backup ballooned to 10 miles, uh, but the problem is uh, their, their process, and, and no, this is no fault to the state, this is just what, what people do when there's a backup. They put a red X on the right lane, so the two left lanes were green, the, the right lane was a red X, meaning they wanted to leave that lane open for our emergency services. Somebody had a heart attack, somebody has to get the Anne Arundel General, our ambulances and our emergency service could get through. Well, it only took one person to get on the bridge and ride that right lane in the X, and I got pictures of everybody in that lane. So now it's totally jammed off, it's, it's clogged, and nobody can get through. So that's something, you know, we're going to address that uh, at the next Bay Bridge Reconstruction Advisory Group, I think is July 8th. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Red X. Uh, I, I, I will give the, the state credit. They're, they're bouncing in and out of ContraFlow to try and level things out. And again, you know, uh, the, they're counting vehicles. The side that has the most vehicles is going to get the third lane. And that's just the way it's going to be for now. And uh, we'll see what, what comes of the, uh, the Red X and, and uh, other issues. Because, you know, we're, we're going to also address you know, one of the questions I want to have is, you know, what are we going to do? You saw, everybody saw what happened in Philadelphia when a tanker crashed underneath a bridge. Uh, concrete does not like heat. Concrete explodes when it gets hot. So we have these lithium ion battery cars, and once they catch fire, we all know what happens. I mean, there's, you, you know, you got to let them burn themselves out. 
and I can see it burning a hole right through the bridge. So, you know, it's, it's a question I want to ask. I want to see what they're doing and, and w how they're prepared for that because it is our lifeline. And Jack and I, you know, mentioning the, the tour from the governor, who's very personal. It was very enjoyable. It was, uh, he's, he's humble. He's, 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 he asked, if you didn't ask, he asked once, if you asked once, he asked five times, help me be a better governor. And I, and I got to give the guy credit for that. I, you know, I was, I was truly impressed with him. But when he went to leave, it was a Friday. <laughs> it was starting to rain. It was backed up. And it was already backed up three and a half, almost four miles. And I said, you're getting ready to feel some of our pain. Good. Now, he is the governor. He could have picked up the phone when he got in the car and said, look, it, shut that lane down. I'm coming across the bridge. But I don't know if he did or didn't. But right. you know, I, I was happy to see that he saw the backup on our side. And he saw the backup on the other side because he had to pass it all. So, you know, you know, we'll see where that goes. Uh, you know, we're, there's other things that are in play and, and uh, you know, we're trying to make sure that the bridge doesn't get left behind and that's what we have to do. So more to come later. If I could just add to, Absolutely. to your, hmm? the big X. Yeah, you're, you're, you're <laughs> right. If an EV can, it's going to burn and fall into the bay. Oh yeah. Oh, Not yeah. to mention the environmental impact. Yeah. So the answer is, if you wouldn't mind mm -hmm. is, uh, there's a container. I've seen it. I know exactly. There's a container yeah. out there mm -hmm. that they would, we could put somewhere in the county and share it with well, Talbot. We would have them put it at their that facilities on both sides. I'm just saying, yeah. we could share it with counties and the bridge. Mm -hmm. You have a special forklift. Mm -hmm. You pick it up, mm -hmm. you dump it in, and you close it, and it burns for two weeks. The point is, you can get it off the bridge and take it somewhere, and it's. It doesn't, it tries to smother it, it doesn't, mm -hmm. but at least that's an answer. And they fill it with water too. Um, and it'll burn for a week or whatever, but at least it doesn't turn into an environmental right. hazard. Because you can dump 20,000 gallons dirt and sand on it and it's not going to go out. Mm -hmm. So. No, I, 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 I'm so so totally on board with that. Yeah. So the FEC, since we talked about it a couple meetings ago, they are looking into it and actually what it would take to deploy that and what kind of training is involved. So they're doing the background information. They're going to bring something to us at our not next meeting, the following meeting to give us their, you know, their view on would it be effective? Would it be something we could do logistically? Because like you just said, when that bridge starts to clog, we can't get emergency vehicles up there anyway. So if you've got it, you would have to have it on both sides of the bridge. Well, yeah. I'm just going to say, if you've got a vehicle on fire in the middle of the bridge, the traffic's done, you're not getting emergency vehicles there, right? You would have to have them on opposite sides to be able to bring it in the opposite way and keep people back because as hot as they burn, you can't get within right. humans uh, di a normal fire distance like they would. So. Well, their own info says 50 feet. I just said they're going to have to find a cadet dumb enough to go under there and hook it so they could pull it up with <laughs> a winch into the thing. And they got to do it from the uphill and side. And then they die of smoke down inhalation. Down, so. Anyways, yeah, it's 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 it's, oh, it's a challenge. A, it's gonna be a challenge. Oh, yes, it's I a agree. challenge. So yeah. they're, I mean, they're expensive, but they're not that expensive compared to what they can do. They're about one point two million. Yeah. Hmm. And then you need more than one of our. Then fire you trucks. need the truck, and then right. you need the forklift because it's a. So you're you're but, you're talking. A but hat but you got to remember, Patrick. There's the most expensive fire truck in Queen Anne's County is about to be made, and it's only million dollars. Yeah. So it's we're one piece of equipment, and we've got sixty. 70 pieces of apparatus in the county right now one piece is going to cost as much as our most expensive just and you'll just use for it once a year electric cars and then here's the thing you're going to have more electric cars on the road because that's the push mm -hmm. so one of these isn't going to get it done because you're going to have more just right at 405 uh sunday and yesterday back-to-back -back accidents at 405 again three days yeah. in a row three days i didn't see the saturday one but i, I know I, I know sunday and yesterday and, and both I know Sunday and yesterday were bad ones. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see the Saturday one coming. Yeah, through. but I couldn't. Well, I knew one had the uh, meta back. Mm -hmm. I hear it when it comes in. So, so we were looking into a grant for this, mm -hmm. but it takes forever. Even if we wrote the grant today, it, it could be six months or nine months. But if MDTA bought two, there's your. You've now solved the problem. Yeah. Well, but they can't know, just buy two. Once you put them on notice that you know you better protect your bridge, and then they don't, then. They don't. They don't take a shine into that. So we'll see. Like I said, you know, ask them in the meeting, see what their what their thoughts are on it, and move forward from there. Because that can't be something they expect 
Anne Arundel or, or Queen Anne's County to supply for their, Certainly their facility. Right. Well, yeah. well, plus you got because just, anything up here, you know, anything on land, you just push it right off the roadway and you know get it onto the shoulder and you're fine. Yeah, but, but when you you're got, up on the but bridge, you've got you've got Key Bridge, you've got the tunnels, right. tunnels. I mean, yeah, tunnels got, I mean yeah. they're going to have to. I, I see a time coming when they'll restrict electric vehicles from the tunnels because. How are you going to get in there? You know, it's limited height and everything else that you can even work in there. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, when there, you scoop it up. Do you have the video to show them? Uh, no, oh, I'm, I'm, they're they're well aware of it. Okay, but you know, now we're gonna. It's a English. Make everybody aware of it. It's a uh, English company. Mm -hmm. Yep, very good. Right. Anything, anything else? Do it, Jack. Motion to adjourn. Take it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes, you did. Did you want to testify or talk about anything? Because you, you was.